Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-azhi al We'd like to look to today at the dua which is commonly made after breaking the fast and I'll just say it at first in Arabic and then work through it Allahumma laka sumtu wa bika amantu wa ala rizqika aftartu faghfir li ma qaddamtu wa ma akhartu ya rabbal alameen So one begins with Allahumma O oh Allah uh, People say about it that it, it means Allah It derives from Allah Allah umma na bi khair Allah uh, give us good and this a bridge from Umm and Abi Khair. So it is generally translated as O oh Allah. And it's very very key for the dua. There, there are different ways to make dua. But uh, for example, in the Fatiha, when the, the commentators make uh, explanation of the Fatiha, one thing they point out about the key ayat of the Fatiha, which is the crux of the Fatiha. And since the Fatiha is the crux of the Quran, Therefore, this ayat is the crux of the whole Quran, and that is, "Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in." And in this, we we begin with Allah Taala, "Iyaka, you." So the, this core ayat means, "You we worship, and you we seek help from." Now, anybody who's learning Arabic uh, would, if they were asked to translate such a sentiment into Arabic, they say. They would learn to say, Na'abuduka, we worship you. But of course, there, therefore, you, you've put yourself first and Allah Ta'ala last. And although it's grammatically correct, is much uh, sweeter meaning to, as we said, you we worship and you we seek help from. And the dua, this dua we've done, as most duas, is, is similar. We say, Allahumma, O oh Allah, O oh Allah. And then we say, Laka, Laka, for you, O oh Allah, for you, Sumtu, I fasted, for you I fasted. The, the fast, Allah Ta'ala says in the Hadith Qudsi, as narrated by the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his Lord, the fast is for me, the fast is for me, and I will repay it. So it is a, it's good to remind ourselves that, that, that everything is rewarded by Allah in multiples and there are tenfold rewards for every ordinary action there's tenfold rewards for every good action and as we know from the hadith about it that that if you intend something and you something good and you don't do it there's a reward a single reward but if you do it there's a tenfold reward up to 700 multiples and up to infin- uncountable multiples. And the 700, according to the ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah, is spending a dirham in the way of Allah. And the, the many multiples uh, is the fasting or sabr. It's fasting or sabr. And in the Quran, it is, it, Allah Ta'ala says that he rewards those who have sabr, those who are steadfast, without reckoning without any reckoning and again in, the, in this famous hadith Qudsi which I quoted then Allah Ta'ala himself undertakes to reward the fasting so it's very important Allah Ta'ala says as li, the fasting is for me or it's mine fasting is mine and so we begin this dua saying Allahumma laka sumtu for you I have fasted the fasting is I have fasted for you wa bika and and in you, Wabika, and in you, Amantu, I have Iman, I have Iman. And Iman has got varieties of meanings. The most obvious one, the first one to which the translator will turn is, I believe in you, I believe in you. It has the sense of uh, trusting and affirming and confirming. And... There's also a very lovely sense from one of the the Arabic uh, dictionary scholars, the the scholars of the language, 
in that it's being true. Iman is to be true to the trust, to the amana which Allah has placed in one. So, Allahumma lak asumtu wa bika amantu. Allah, for you I fasted and I've, I've been true to you. I, I believe in you. I affirm you. Wa ala rizqika aftartu. And on your, wa ala, and upon rizqika, upon your provision, aftartu. I have broken my fast. There's something more here in this, in the sense of on your provision, I've broken my fast. And that is for the, the mu'min that he, that he has tried to, uh, he tries throughout his life to eat things that are acceptable and permitted by Allah Ta'ala. But particularly it's recommended by the people of knowledge that one eats and takes special effort with one's provision in, in Ramadan to, eat, to find what is halal. Now, for, for, for the contemporary Muslim, this often is seen as, as looking at the ingredients of, of processed foods and, and making, taking care about the meat, how it was slaughtered. And I'm not uh, denigrating that in any way. But for the Salaf, one of the key perspectives with which they looked at halal food was to do with the money with which it was purchased. So it went back to the economy because if, 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 the, if it had come from usury or, for example, the expropriation of a, of a ruler, expropriation, where he, the ruler taking something against the citizen's will, then they were very cautious about eating such food and they, of course they would heighten their caution in Ramadan. And uh, we have... In this age, we've become used to, in fact, where the usury is everywhere and the state expropriates unbelievable amounts in taxation and these things from people. So we are exposed to these things all the time. I've broken my fast on your provision. So forgive me. Forgive me what? Ma What? Uh, I did earlier, and what I've done later, or possibly what I've, I've sent ahead. Qaddama is to, to send something ahead, is to, to, to actively send it ahead. And akhara is to defer it, leave it behind, to leave it behind. So we're asking for these two different types of uh, th- false wrongdoings, omissions to be forgiven by the virtue of having fasted. The dua concludes with Ya Rabbil Alameen. Concludes as it began because we began with Allah Ta'ala and rather than ending with our wrong actions we end with the memory of Allah Ta'ala, the Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. So we finish the dua with with Allah Ta'ala as it began. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.